No way, is that Gran Turismo 4? It's the Christmas of 2006 in central Ohio, the land of the bleak. 12 months before the world collapses, six months before I can play that ball tilt game on my dad's iPhone, and about the same time that my beloved E90 platform is shipping its first unit. Most importantly, my big brother is back from college. And you know, when you're a nine year old kid, that means more than you think, cause he was freaking cool. He still is, he's, he's alive. He listened to Third Eye Blind. He had an unclothed woman as his desktop background. Mom would like totally not approve of that in our good Christian household. Most importantly, he had an original Xbox, or as it was known at the time, an Xbox. And although I didn't know it yet, this is where my love of cars is going to start. You know, where the seed will be planted, like the bomb in CS or that scene in Inception. I was disappointed. We just tried. And that bomb was titled Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. I don't know if you remember this game, but it's the one that came out eight years before its prequel and then introduced me and many of the rest of the world to unhealthy obsessions that cost money. I'm talking about the yellow Lamborghini Murcielago. If I would have stubbed my toe for a Capri Sun, I'd have sold my soul to the animals for a piece of this banana colored bad boy. I could feel like a badass by outrunning the law itself. I could feel like Brian O'Connor sailing all 15 pixels of my blue Dodge Viper straight into the guardrail. I didn't say I was good at it. So today I want to show all hundred of you how video games have made me and all the rest of us, you know, love cars and build friendships. And I'm going to do that by looking at two main groups of games. Before we start, a few ground rules as to what I consider a car, in case you're wondering why I left something out. One, if it has treads, it's not a car. Two, if it shoots bullets bigger than a Coke can, it's not a car. Three, if it's a boat, it's not a car. And four, um, if it's from a movie originally, you know, like <coughs> Star Wars, I'm not including it because future Michael might just need some content ideas. Thank you very much. <laughs> Our first group is games where cars are the heart of the gameplay, and I've generally noticed that these lie on a spectrum from on the very left side, games that try and be really realistic, to all the way on the right side, our roads are made of rainbows. Starting on that left side, we have the games that try their very hardest to accurately emulate, you know, exactly what driving is like. These are sim racers like iRacing, Project Cars 2, uh, the Formula One series, and to a lesser extent, games like Forza and Gran Turismo that seek to recreate every pebble, G-force, piss-soaked suit and financially strained relationship of the track racing experience. These games invented tierless before tierless were cool and are pretty much what most people think of when they think of a racing game. And personally, I think that most people who play these are already into cars to some degree. That's kind of what it takes when you decide to drop 10 grand on a gaming rig to virtually perform the responsibilities of a real, actual job and not get paid for it. In the middle of our spectrum, we have our in-betweeners. These are the games like VRC Simulator, uh, Need for Speed, Burnout Paradise. You know, the games where you smash NOS so you can hit a gigantic jump that doesn't kill you on impact. Also arcade machine racers, like the ones that my friends and I would play on our ski club field trip. Actually, funny aside about that, to really maximize our money, we would have one person control steering and one person control gas and brakes. Such a shit show, but so fun. I also tried that on a golf cart once with alcohol involved. That did not end so well, but if you're the sibling who was involved in that, you know who you are. Then on the far right side, we have the Our Roads Are Rainbows category. This is, of course, Mario Kart, but also Rocket League. This is basically the part of the spectrum where you can launch heat-seeking endangered species at your friends, and where drifting actually increases your speed. Frankly, I think that the Our Roads Are Rainbows category is the most endearing of the games where cars are the main focus, because it's the most approachable, you know? It's not every day that I get to play Forza with my friends, but you know, you open up Mario Kart at any party and everybody wants to play. So if that can serve as a gateway drug to this disease, more power to it. The second grouping we have are games where cars are not the main focus. And to be clear, I'm not talking about games where cars are just some background prop designed to you know, either help you get around faster or literally do nothing at all, like various Minecraft mods, The Last of Us, Fallout, or this Tomb Raider promotion from like 2000 for the Jeep Wrangler. No, I'm talking about games where cars actually do stuff like Battlefield, Halo, GTA, and uh, Destiny loosely, very loosely on Destiny. And to be honest, I think that these games have arguably done even more for my love of this hobby than uh, any of the dedicated racing games have, because even I, who views railroad tracks as half pipes and who bought exhaust tips off eBay for my car to make the back end look 1% better, 
still spend most of my time playing first person shooters and StarCraft because I enjoy pain. My point is, racing games are only a small niche in a huge field of genres, so as far as impacting the most people, it's the cars here. So let's go down the list. Starting off, we've got GTA. Now, I love Grand Theft Auto, and it's a game where you get to basically do and be whatever the hell you want in a city that is yours for the taking, and naturally, cars serve a purpose. Status, obviously. You could run people over with them, like prostitutes or punk kids on PSN. You can use them to get away from the police. You can pull elderly people out of their cars and then run them over. And transportation, I guess. My point being that GTA is a game where you just get to fuck around and cars enable that. Then we've got Destiny, which includes this little pop-out speeder thing, much like Star Wars, that gets you from point A to point B. I suppose this doesn't really fit our category, but I'm including it anyway because customization. You can pick however you want your speeder to look like, and customization is what life is about. So the hope is that, you know, the more people customize their light cycles, I think they're called light cycles, the more people look at a Civic with a cardboard spoiler and go, yeah, that's okay. I've now moved us to the ass end of the car in honor of our next two games, which are about kicking ass. Of course, Halo and Battlefield. These are honestly the real titans, and the cars that I'm specifically talking about are, of course, the Warthog, the Ghost, and this little cart thing. And of course there are other cars in these games, but not all of them are as iconic or as not a piece of shit. Getting all your friends or your soon to be friends into a warthog is one of the greatest experiences of this entire world. It's like going to Wendy's at 3 a.m. except that, you know, it's Tokyo Drift everywhere and when you get there, you're gonna kill everybody. In Battlefield it's similar but with a twist, right? So what you do is you have one of your recon buddies put their C4 pack on the front and then you both get in and try and sneak up on a tank and then you drive as fast as you can into the side of the tank then you get out at the last second and kamikaze blow it up high risk high reward not to leave out the ghost of course this is the classic covenant vehicle in halo that floats and you can splatter people with it and it's the vehicle that you get in when you're selfish and you only care about yourself and you know that these are really good inclusions of vehicles because they have the potential to be as bad as they are good you know when someone is in your warthog and they absolutely suck at driving Shit sucks. Same thing when someone keeps stealing vehicles from spawn or when they take one of the carts and blow up this tower like the soulless bitch that they are. Now to finish up, I have one last car, a very iconic car to show you. Now, technically it's not self-powered, but I, I wanted to include this anyway. Uh, I think you'll appreciate it. Now, unfortunately, the only picture I was able to find of it is really small, so bear with me as I try and make this bigger for you. Hopefully you can make out what it is. Didn't see it coming, did you? If you like this video, I feel like a flight attendant. I have some complimentary other ones you may just enjoy. For instance, uh, last week I smashed my door with a sledgehammer to see if I could fix it. It's another funny one. I think that if you haven't seen it, you should definitely go watch it. All right, take care.